Aloha mai kako and welcome to Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. I'm your host, Walter Kawaiaia. Today's episode is titled A Tribute to Hawaiian Music Icon, Renoa Kiabe. And joining me to share and talk story about this musical legend is her granddaughter, Pomaika Ilaiman. Aloha Pomai. Aloha mai. Thank you for, for being here. Thank Let you. me just share a little bit about you uh, with our viewers. Pomaika Ilaiman is a Hawaiian music entertainer, educator, and administrator, event producer, and former Mrs. Hawaii 2016. She is a graduate of Punahou School and Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah, where she obtained her bachelor's in economics. She's married to Shane Lyman, owner of Hawaii Elite Athletic Training, and together they have four children between the ages of 10 and 15. Omaika'i enjoys working with youth in the Hawaiian Focus Charter and Hawaiian Language Immersion Schools. She served as a director for the annual Ho'omau Benefit, the only event to gather all the Hawaiian Language Immersion Schools on Oahu, and has done this for the past seven years. As a descendant of a Hawaiian music legend, Omaika'i continues to pave her own path while perpetuating the legacy left behind by her beloved grandmother and everyone's favorite auntie, Janoa Keawe. Thank you so much for being here. I've really been looking forward to this and uh, talking story. I just have fond memories of Grandma. You know, um, my wife and I were part of the Kahawano Lake Singers, and every year we did the annual Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame at the Hawaii Theater. Yes. And I distinctly remember in that particular year that your, your grandmother was a recipient of being inducted into the mm -hmm. Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame. And sitting back with her, she was so... So sweet. She was everybody's grandma. You know, she had reached that pinnacle in her life and in her musical career. And all of the recognition that came to her was well-deserved. So I want to ask our, our engineer to maybe put up our first picture and we can start our, our journey in this conversation to talk about you, Pomai, and everything that you've accomplished and what you're doing to, you know, continue uh, grandma's legacy. So there she is, yes. And um, gosh. So beautiful. <laughs> she is beautiful. I mean, if I had to, if you had to describe one thing, feature about her, what would that be? Well, it's, for me, definitely her smile. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Um, you cannot help but smile back every time she smiled at you. And so, um, and then, and then the next thing would be her eyes. Her eyes. <laughs> yes. Her eyes um, basically said, I love you on their own. <laughs> um, up to the day that she passed, I think that was something that I treasured was when she, when she would look at me and tell me, I love you. Oh, how sweet. Yeah, that's good. That's just so nice to have that kind of connection yes. with a grandmother and a granddaughter. Yeah. So what are some of the earliest um, memories or recollections that you have of hearing your grandmother sing? Oh, ever since I can remember, um, you know, I just did a gig at, at, at a local bar in town and um, people ask me, you know, because um, I don't consume alcohol, but I love to be around everyone who's people having fun. <laughs> yes. Um, part of it being, you know, because I know that my grandma was performing in the bars when she was younger. You know, she would sell lays, drive taxi during the day. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. She was a lay seller, and she also drove taxi. And so um, at night, she would take her gigs in the, in the local bars. And, and, you know, there were some fun times, I hear. And I'm so glad that they were able to catch uh, one of those performances at Aloha Grill Live, the very last performance oh. that she had before they closed. And so that became one of her albums under her record company, Genoa Cave Records. And I just love playing that album over and over and over because it's almost as if I was right there. And to hear people in the background cheering and cooing. And, and then when she's on the mic, you know, she'll stop in the middle of a verse to invite people up to dance the hula. Um, I think it's that connection with our local community and our ohana that allows us to be able to go out into the world to share even more you sure. know we have to we have to have that pilina with with our people and whether it's in someone's backyard or in the bars <laughs> so my earliest recollection in the bar was 
sleeping behind the speaker. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So <laughs> my dad would bring me, tag, tag along, and he would stay and listen to her perform and of course mingle Mr. Aloha with everybody. Right. Um, but because I was so young, I would get tired early, right? So I would go right behind the speaker where the sound wasn't, you know, blasting in my ear, but it was just enough that the vibrations helped me to go to sleep. You know, that reminds me because um, one of my students is Hanai daughter. You might know her. Her name is Miley Lu Ching. She was a Hanai mm -hmm. daughter of Nona Beamer. She actually runs, she created and she runs the Hula Preservation Society. Yes. And um, so Miley uh, has a daughter, I think her name is Kupu. And Kupu is, I want to say 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. But Kupu has, Miley has taken her everywhere she's gone. And we were just commenting on that coming back. And I, I truly believe that mm -hmm. when, a, when a mother does, or a father, you know, takes the, the, makes the effort to do that, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot easier to just leave them at home mm -hmm. and go do your business. Mm -hmm. But that extra effort, you know, uh, consistently done, is going to pay off big time benefits, not just for the little girl, like it did for you, but it's going to pay off for the family and the mom later. Which I'm seeing in my daughter. You are. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, my, your daughter, somebody told me she plays saxophone in the school band. Saxophone in the school band. She, she plays... taught herself how to play piano and guitar, and she picked up the bass, but her main instrument is the steel guitar, which she's um, learned under Uncle Alan Akaka. Uh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, and when she, was, when she was a baby, that's exactly what happened is my husband was working, you know, uh, later hours at the gym and then I was starting my gig right about the time he was finishing so there was a little like Window crossover yeah. yes where I couldn't quite hand her off yet and he couldn't pick her up so I had to bring her with me to my gig in her car seat place her <laughs> behind us on the stage because I couldn't ask the aunties or everybody sure. else to watch her right so I'm she's on the stage and I'm lucky that she was uh, good enough of a baby that she never, she never cried. The music calmed her. She just would sit there and observe. And listen. Well, she's listening to her mommy sing. <laughs> yeah. so she recognizes your Leo, your voice. The nice, the nice Leo. <laughs> the nice Leo, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, about when in your in your growing up years did you pick up an instrument? I mean, I know you said you've heard it was around you all the time, mm -hmm. but at what point in your life did you decide that this was something that you were going to definitely do? It wasn't until my high school years that I learned that this would be something that I was going to take on as kuleana. Um, when I was little, my grandma always had an instrument available for every young mo'opuna in the hale. So there was an ukulele available for us to pick up whenever we were ready. She never forced it upon us. But when we did pick it up, she would take the time to sit with us and to teach us how to play and strum. And so one of the first songs I ever learned was a composition by Wendell Silva, written in 1980, I want to say six or seven. Um, but he wrote it as part of a competition, a song competition for the Year of the Hawaiian. And the title that year of the Year of the Hawaiian was Ho'olako, Hawaii, to unite. Of a unite. Uh, yes, yes, and I so I when I learned that song, I got to perform it with her for the first time. She, you know, she brought me with her to a conference out at Brigham Young University in Laie. And I was about six years old when I performed that ballet. Um, and then, you know, I played and I danced hula with Auntie Hui Park and then with Auntie Huakale Kamau. And then in my high school years, I thought, okay, I'm going to be a hula director for the Punahou School May Day program. And when I didn't get that position, Ooh. I said, now what? <laughs> um, and I was encouraged by Dave Eldridge to audition as one of the musicians. And so, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, they think that just because I'm the granddaughter of Genoa Kiave, right, that right. I should be able to sing Hawaiian music. So I go and audition, and the song that I auditioned with was Pandanus Club. 
Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I really liked that song yeah, at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yes. They played it a lot on the radio. Yes, at <laughs> that time. Mm -hmm. Um and I you know, I got the position of a musician and the first song they give me to perform, two songs, Oni Conjugations, Kabutia Omanoa and Antilina's Oliver Apa. <laughs> <laughs> Which oh, is, easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I listen to the recordings of those songs and I go, oh, geez. <laughs> so I go home, I get the lyrics, I practice, and Tutu comes out of her room and she says, let me, let me teach you, let me show you how. So, um, you know, that was when she started working with me as a freshman in high school. So that's when it began. Yes. So like you said earlier, that the instruments were there, but she never pushed. Right. She and that's really the way to do things when you think about it in life mm -hmm. for anything. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Just when the time is right, you'll know because they'll follow the path, whatever yeah. the path is. And the other part of it was that I really wanted to be a part of my school May Day program. And so if that was the way to do it, I had to learn how to Ironic, <laughs> sing these songs yeah. and play the instrument. And so um, I went from jamming Ka'ol Creator Boys with friends in the hallway to mm -hmm. learning how to sing my grandma's music. music. That's, uh, that's a leap. Yeah, that is a leap. That's a leap. And so um, I went, you know, I went forward with, with doing that throughout high school, but it wasn't until the middle of my junior year in high school that my grandma finally felt that I was ready to come and perform with her in public. Okay. <laughs> Up until then, it was you need to work on this you need to practice a little so bit more cute. and then finally mid-year in my junior year of high school when i had the chance to travel with her to my auntie's uh, hello hoike in seattle washington wow yeah, so. that must have been that must have been um wonderful though when you reflect back on that first moment that you got to step on stage and sing because you knew she, you know, by that time, mm -hmm. you knew she was something a lot more than just your grandmother to the rest of the world. Yeah. And so I'm sure there was some sense of Juliana that came upon you that you realized that, and I would imagine that's harder mm -hmm. because you're her granddaughter. Mm -hmm. There's this expectation by the world that, oh, because you are, you're going to be. And so we'll talk more. We're going to go okay. to a break in a few minutes. But when we come back, I'd like to explore that because I, I think a lot of us, a lot of kids, whether it relates to Hawaiian music, the hula, or other facets of life, mm -hmm. you know, we can all experience. I mean, I grew up with, you know, in the shadows of Kahawa and the lake. And, um, yeah, it can be challenging. All right, everybody, we are here with our guest in Apomaika E. Lyman, granddaughter of legendary uh, musical icon of traditional Hawaiian music, uh, Auntie Janoki Ave. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back and continue talking sorry with Bo Maikai. Aloha, y'all. My name is Mitch Ewan. I'm from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and I'm the host of Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy. We're on every Wednesday at 4 o'clock, and we hope that we have interesting uh, guests who talk to us about various energy things that are happening in Hawaii, all the way from PV to windmills to hydrogen. Most of my heart, electric buses and electric vehicles. So please dial in every Wednesday at 4 o'clock on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. Aloha. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough of Sister Power here at Think Tech of IE. And Sister Power is all about motivating, empowering, educating, and inspiring all people. And we have various subjects here. Sister Power is here at ThinkTech every other Thursday at 4 p.m. Again, my name is Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, host of Sister Power. We look forward to seeing you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at sistersempoweringhawaii at gmail.com. Look forward to chatting with you soon. Aloha. Aloha my kako and welcome back from our break and we're here talking story with Paul Maika E. Lyman, granddaughter of legendary musical icon Janoke Ave. So I'm going to ask um, Eric to put up our 
Second picture, I guess it would be, yeah, there we go. Okay, oh, look at those love, I love, for some reason I am drawn to black and whites. It just, because you know the era. So tell us, uh, I think I know where grandma yeah. is, that she's uh, second from the left with her ukulele. Yes, yes, look how tall she is. I know, I didn't realize she was that tall. <laughs> yes, um, as she got older, she said she, said she graciously um, got closer to the <laughs> graciously got closer yes. to the ground um, oh my goodness no you know what i love about that picture and i recognize auntie violet on the base was that i got to experience some of them there's also auntie abby in that picture um but, but you, were young, you know though, groups eh? i wasn't even born oh, you were born okay i know <laughs> um but there were groups of all female uh, yeah yeah yes. and that was common yeah, it, it was much more common then than it is today now it's men and you know i have to mention that you know when i was looking at the nahoku listing the finalist ballot for this year the men category male huge. vocalist huge and the, the female. female like this and of those female maybe two or three maybe three are singing hawaiian music you know um, when you go back to that era and mm -hmm. can you date that you know when that was? Uh, I want to say that 50s? was the 50s, 60s. 50s yeah. and 60s. 60s, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, when I, see, when I see her, I mean, she just has that, yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whip them, kill them. They all do, in fact. Right. I mean, yeah, it, you know, but I grew up in that, that era. And so I was, it was commonplace for me to see yeah. all of these, you know, the Halikulani the girls. Yes. Yeah, the women, and they're powerful. Yes. Um, equal with the men. And they could jam, yeah. Oh, they, they could, totally they could jam. carry on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know, in talking to your grandmother, and I remember she played. It was a place in Waikiki. It was her. You know that first album that comes that came out, um, Benny Rogers, right? Yes. Yes. And yes. they were playing in Waikiki. Uh, George Hum and I would go see them, and, but I cannot remember the place, the name of the place. And it's it's pretty much first when you first enter Waikiki. Um, it was a f well known uh, nightclub where where uh, you know you know played oh and, the name is escaping me too <laughs> i know but you know what i'm talking about yeah i mean everybody all the locals used to go there because that's where it was happening um uh, okay. not club polynesia no, not, club <laughs> not polynesia, club polynesia. No, no. but anyway yeah yes. um okay our next picture oh yeah look at her <laughs> oh, look, no. and she labeled it right there, Primo Gardens, Primo 1973. Gardens. Yes, yeah. Uncle Peter Ahia, who, yeah. who actually was uh, one artist that recorded under her record label. He PK did. Records. And yeah. I, you know, I remember Peter because uh, when my, uh, my wife and I were working on promotions with Hawaiian, mm -hmm. uh, I remember we took this tour to Europe, and the musicians were Peter, uh, Kekua, Fernandez, mm -hmm, Manny mm -hmm, Fernandez, mm -hmm. and myself. Mm -hmm. And Peter, he was a he was a crack up. He was mm -hmm. crazy. Because <laughs> you see, you see his hair. Um, yes. And we, I, I'm not speaking like of him. This is, yeah. But one morning, we all met for breakfast in in the hotel that we're staying at. And I guess he didn't. He just came out, and his hair was flat. <laughs> so, oh, Look different. Yeah. Totally different. <laughs> but anyway, a great musician. Peter had such. I loved his voice. Yes. I loved his voice, and, yes. and I know he played often. His, his uncle, Val Cipollino, mm -hmm. was close with, with mm -hmm. Grandma, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, Val's, um, yeah, who was, oh, Val was married to Auntie, Auntie Mommy, Auntie Mommy yes. Cipollino. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. And she was, uh, she was one of Auntie Mikey's original dancers. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful, very stately, very yes. stately. All right, Eric, our next picture. <clears throat> oh, yeah, okay. More so, legends. <laughs> more legends, yeah, that's. So we have Auntie on, on the left on, uh, in the wheelchair, and that's, uh, is that Edith McKenzie? No, that's Auntie Malia Craver. Oh, I'm sorry, Malia yes. Craver. That's right, that's and right. And then Uncle George, of course, George, in okay. his, his, his beautiful decked out purple. <laughs> and then I see, isn't that uh, Jeremy Hopkins' mother? Um, grandmother. Uh, that's grandmother, that's his grandmother. My grandma's oldest niece, Auntie Mommy. She's the first in that generation. Ah. And then my dad is the youngest in that generation. So yeah. Auntie Mommy's mother is my grandmother's older sister. Okay, so. see, this is so yes. typical conversation. No matter what the subject is, we, we somehow <laughs> Connecting the ohana. Connecting, yes. discover, <laughs> gather, and connect. Yeah, yes. genealogy information. Yes. Okay, photos tell the story. Our next... Uh, 
Oh, there you are. Yeah. So okay. that last picture was of us at the uh, Waikiki Beach Marriott, which was formerly the Hawaiian Regent Hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. when Tutu was performing there, she started off in the lobby bar. And then her crowd became so huge that Went they decided the they were going to move the stage upstairs poolside on the third floor. And so um, that picture was, that initial picture was of when she moved. Um, when she passed in 2008, I had the honor of being, you know, taking her seat. And so I got to be on stage, and that's what the next picture is with Uncle Gary. And we sat just like that in that order. Um, Uncle Gary was always on my right with the bass, and then to my left was Auntie Momi Kahavayola'a um, on guitar, and then on the far end is Alan Akaka Alan on the Akaka. steel guitar. Wow. Yeah. So I carried on that same gig for another eight years before it ended in 2016. So, wow. Because yeah. we, when I had my group, my male trio, myself, mm -hmm. um, Jeff Teves, and Henry Barrett, we mm -hmm. played at the the Hawaiian region, in mm -hmm. the lobby bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, uh, and then I do remember, you know, when Grandma came down and played out there. Yeah. It was a good place to play. They didn't realize, Auntie Mona Wood is the one who recommended that they bring her in, you know, to provide, you know, Hawaiian music ambiance for the place. And of course, she knew who Tutu was and said, you need to have Genoa Kiabi here. And so... Um, what they didn't realize was how big her crowd would be every Thursday. <laughs> and then, you know, she's contracted to a certain time, but always went over half an hour to an hour. So the group that went on right after, you know, it would end up just kind of cruising at the bar and just <laughs> waiting. And they didn't mind, of sure. course, because they played until midnight after she got off. So. I remember those uh, hours. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but I'm sure they didn't mind out of respect and aloha yeah. for grandma, yeah? Right. Well, before we throw, put up other pictures, let's talk about you. Okay. So you, you're an entertainer, you're a musician, you're a producer of events. Uh, I know you are with the Hawaiian Immersion School. Yes. Um, tell us, I mean, how do you, and still raising children? <laughs> And taking care of a husband, you know, how does that all work for you? And managed to be Mrs. Hawaii 2016, and you still look like you could run for Mrs. Hawaii oh this year and win Thank again. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, my, my life path has taken me so many different places, and I think I've realized now at this point where I am that it's going in the same direction. It's just that I'm making all these little detours along the way, and um, although it may not be directly related to my path, it's really helping me to understand more of why I'm, you know, why I'm walking this path. And so the many things that I've done, the, you know, the fitness competition, the beauty oh. pageant, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, running a marathon, you know, all of that. And then, and then getting into the education field when my bachelor's in, is in economics, you know, I love. I love business and I love money. I love, um, well, we all love money, but I love numbers, <laughs> um, accounting things. and. Um, so having a degree in economics means you can balance your checkbook perfectly, right? Yeah, I did. And then, and then I had uh, a family. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized that it's not that easy when you throw emotions into <laughs> that factor. So um, anyway... I think it's really helped me to kind of, you know, develop myself into the woman that I am today to, uh, to uh, what is the word, to speak, um, be more eloquent in my words and to, to present myself better, uh, whereas before, you know, just throw my hair up in a messy bun and leave and go say aloha to people. I can but, never imagine you throwing your hair yeah. up in a messy bun. Oh, so. <laughs> well, look at pictures of me about <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> so. Well, I, you know, I, you know, we all go through, I think we all in our own way go through the same thing, but, you know, we travel a path that we earmark that that's what, what we want to do. And there are things that come that veer us off in a moment. Mm -hmm. But I like, you know, I think, you know, about that, I think it just broadens as we travel. We may have started that path and that path may have been extremely narrow in terms yes. of our experience exactly but as we travel and are willing to accept opportunities that might not necessarily be in our wheelhouse of experience mm -hmm. but we accept it because we know it's going to just make us better and then the path gets broad and broad mm -hmm. and at some point down the road perhaps now in your life or in the near future the pathway is going to be broad 
because of everything that you and I have experienced. And I love that analogy because when the path is more broad, I can bring more people along on this journey. So um, that's becoming that's becoming more of my um, pleasure in doing this. Is that you know I've I've made so many different connections that have helped me to continue to walk this path, and and also have my family there with me. And it's not easy. We're still facing obstacles. Oh, yeah. um, but I can have a more clear uh, vision and know that, you know, like I, I don't have to stay on this narrow, narrow path. I can, I can do this a little bit. And so um, it's and been fun. And you're being a, a great example as a mother to your children because they're watching every step you make. Yeah. And, uh, you, know, that's, you know, they're going to be in your shoes one day talking about you and, you know, hope that tradition or that legacy. And likewise, character. they teach me a yeah. lot too. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, can we have another picture? Yeah. Oh yeah, tell us about it. Speaking love of I my family. This. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is a tradition that my uh, grandmother, you know, made sure that we all um, were a part of every year. And this is some years ago. I can see my daughter. In fact, this was right after my oldest was born. But these graves are the graves in Kahana Valley. Oh, you know, when, you turn, okay, when you turn when you turn onto Trout Farm Road, you uh -huh. have to kind of hike up into the mountain a little bit. And my grandmother always took us there. That is my grandfather's parents. Oh. And so we go up there um, to take care of those graves. And we are one of the only families that do that. You know, there's a bunch of graves in that area, but um, she always went up to clear, and there, there's little graves around. And, wow. and when the tsunami happened in, I think it was 63, um, that, that devastated Kahana Valley, um, some of those victims are there in that grave too. So it's a wow. good talking point. There was an LDS church right there wow. for a long time that just recently got, you know, got demolished, maybe about a few years ago. So it's a good um, educational spot where we could ask, you know, my tutu stories, um, or ask her questions, and she would tell us stories of what happened in that valley. So I, I know, um, and our time is running out. I know that uh, Cy yeah. Bridges is from Kahana Valley. Yes, and he has amazing stories that he tells about yes. growing up there and the value of all of that. And so I, I'm interested. Yeah. Can we, um, Eric? Can we get our our last the last picture you have? Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh. So, you know, we're going to have to bring uh, Paul Mike uh, back uh, because we were, we've literally run out of time. But <laughs> I love this picture because everything she said about Tutu, I think it's, you know, there it is. That's, that's her, her legacy. And tell me why you, you like that picture so much. You know, um, it's just her and her ukulele and her smile, and you can see right into her eyes, and they're not, you know, fancy, no eyeliner, no, you know, makeup, nothing. It's just her. And that picture was taken, actually, when she received the National Endowment of the Arts recognition oh. in Washington, D.C. And so, you know, that picture just reminds me of all the work that she's done and how she's recognized not just by myself and our family, or the community, but the world, the world is yeah. recognizing her. And, you know, it was someone who told me that she, you know, your grandmother is a beacon of light. And in, in, in the darkness that is just enveloping this whole entire yeah. world, that we are looking for those types of people who are spreading light and love. And her music was how she shared her aloha. And, and so I, it's my hope that I can do the same too. And, she set the example, she set the bar, and I'm constantly trying to live up to that. So. Well, you're doing an excellent job, <laughs> and we appreciate you know, everything that you, your whole family, your, your grandmother, and what they represent. And you know, I, I have to agree with Pomai uh, that you know, even though Tutu is gone from us, but her music lives on. And in, as you know, she said, the times that we live in, all of us are desirous for that light and that hope. And when we, we reflect back or when we listen to, you know, uh, Janelle's music, that's the, that's the kind of light uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, puts a smile on our face. So thank you so much. Mahalo for uh, having me. Thank you for tuning in for today's episode. 
And as much as we miss hearing the live voice of Auntie Genoa, I want to thank Genoa's granddaughter, Paul Micah Lyman, who is doing such a wonderful job in seeing to it that her grandmother's musical legacy lives on. Again, mahalo to you, Paul Micah e. Thank you for joining me. I'm Walter Kovai, uh, your host here at Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. Until next time, take care, everybody. Aloha no. Aloha.